Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can import your actor core characters and motions into 3D Studio Max via the Auto Setup plugin, which allows for easy import of Reillusion characters and motions. To get started, make sure that you've downloaded and installed the plugin to 3ds Max. Be aware that there are three different versions to accommodate your version of 3ds Max. After you log into your Reillusion account and fill out the subsequent form, the download will begin. Unzip the zip file and run the bat file, which will install the plugin to your 3ds Max. You'll then be able to find the Reillusion item on the top menu, under which you'll find the Auto Setup plugin. Let's look at basic Actor Core character import first. In Actor Core, follow the basic procedure to choose a character model, then an animation that you want to assign to it. Motions that include facial animations will have a small speaking icon in the thumbnail. When downloading, be sure to select 3ds Max as your target application. When downloading a character and motion, you'll get a zip file that contains folders for both actor and motion with an FBX and JSON file in both. When importing via the Auto Setup plugin, be sure to select your preferred render engine first, as each utilizes different material linking methods. Both V-Ray and Arnold are available, and in this case we're using Arnold. Hit Browse FBX to find your Actor Core FBX. The accompanying JSON will be automatically loaded as long as it's in the same folder. Select Add for the initial content option to bring in the character mesh, and you'll see a character skeleton hierarchy in the Scene Explorer. You can see the low poly geometry of the character mesh, as well as the successful material assignment in the Material Editor. You'll also see the character's facial blend shape data under Morpher in the Command Panel, and play around with the values to see the result. We haven't imported the animation yet though, so let's do that. We can also do this from the standard file import menu, being sure to select update animation in the file content dropdown. After that, be sure to extend the frames in the timeline to accommodate the length of the imported animation and play back to check the results. Now that our character is imported properly, let's look at setting up the environment for rendering. There are currently no scene lights, however we can easily apply various lighting templates for both head and body with a single click from the Look Dev tab. As well as remove them with the Remove Light Preset button. Here I've applied a template in which the render output dimensions of the camera need to be adjusted. I can do that via the respective render setup output size values and then proceed to apply an HDR. There are basic values in the HDR subtab, including global exposure settings, not to mention a convenient Macbeth chart that is useful for editing lighting or video compositing. When you're ready to render, you can use the standard 3ds Max render tool, or simply click the render button at the bottom of the auto setup window. Make sure you have the appropriate camera selected as well, then go ahead and test your render. Most actor core characters have different color schemes, which can also be adjusted via the auto setup panel thanks to the embedded RGB and color ID masks. Under the material tab, you'll find the standard normal, roughness, and subsurface scattering parameters, as well as color swatches for various parts of the mesh as determined by the aforementioned mask texture maps. You can test out the various looks by choosing different colors for each of these. This is a super useful feature of Actor Core characters that allows you to generate and render numerous versions of the same model. Okay, now that we've covered material basics, let's look at posing the character via the control rig next. In the Auto Setup panel, you'll find tabs for both face and body rigs. For the body, you have the option of utilizing a 3ds Max biped or cat rig controller. 
select the one you want and simply click Create Rig, after which you'll see the skeletal hierarchy in the Scene Explorer. Clicking Enable Rig will allow you to use the controller dummy in the panel to select the various bones, including individual fingers. You can use the various motion options here, including setting sliding keys for the feet in order to test out the human IK result when moving the hip bone downwards, as well as the feet and hands. As mentioned, you also have the option to assign a cat rig. To swap them, have the character mesh selected, click on Delete Rig, then select the Cat Rig option and create a new one. Here you can see the unique bone hierarchy, and once again, you can click on Enable Rig with the character selected to enable the controller. As you can see, the Cat Rig controller works just fine for pose adjustment. You can utilize these same controllers for either biped or cat rigs to quickly generate your own pose within minutes. The ActorCore website also contains a large library of props and accessories, which you can also import into your project via the same Browse FBX button. Finally, we can utilize the face rig panel to give our character an expression. Be aware that both biped and cat controllers utilize the same facial control system. Here's the rendered result with Arnold using one of the quick lighting templates included with the Auto Setup plugin. Actor core characters are ideal for crowd animations, which you can quickly and easily assemble in iClone using the intuitive crowd generation tools. Here's an example of a crowd scene already set up in iClone, which could be used for any number of creative or commercial purposes. You can see in the scene manager that this scene contains quite a number of elements, so I've split it up into more manageable groups for individual FBX export. Use the standard FBX export in iClone, being sure to select 3ds Max as the target tool preset in the export panel. For inanimate objects, you only need to export the current frame as there is no animation involved. However, with animated elements like the characters, be sure to set the appropriate frame range. When exporting multiple items in a single FBX export, you'll only get a single FBX and JSON file regardless of how many items were exported each time. Next, I can import each grouped FBX into my 3ds Max project using the same process. Again, make sure to select your preferred render engine before importing. This time I'm using V-Ray. With all of the FBX files imported in, we can still select individual elements of all of our props and characters. In addition, we have some lights and cameras set up. However, with large scenes like this, rendering can be quite time consuming. To speed things up, you can try exporting different passes of the scene separately and import them into image editing software or After Effects for adjustments. Under Render Elements in the Render Setup panel, you can also select individual render channels for separate renders. Here I'm choosing V-Ray Z-Depth, which will produce a grayscale image indicating scene depth. You can also export diffuse color, ambient occlusion, object ID, crypto matte, specular reflection, and more, as well as various post-production filters and color adjustments. That's it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.